incorrect, that's one of those negative words. You're putting the blame on the user. You screwed up, you did something bad. Or like incompatible browser detected. That's, that's computer lingo, you know? It's what you, you know, plain Swedish for, for incompatible browser is that that's how we say incompatible. Does not work together with. So, yeah, get rid of tech lingo, don't use negative words, put the blame on yourself, not on the user, and clearly identify the error so the user knows what to correct. Don't be too clever or worried. So, like, the best thing is to do with Craven. He just takes away all the error messages. He just accepts, he just tries to figure out what the user really wants to do and then and just do it. But if you have to develop, if you have to deliver error messages, this is how you can do it. Um, and, and also give the user a hint of how the problem can be solved. I think this is a really good one. I searched for London with two Ds on, on purpose because I was researching this, this article I wrote. And it said, it basically says, it gave me like, we are not sure what location you are searching. We are not sure. It's like, you did nothing wrong, but we're kind of stupid around here, so we haven't figured it out yet. So, uh, uh, so you can ch check from any of these top ones, or you can try a new search. That's a very friendly, easy way of doing it. And it also, in the beginning, it says what happened. What went wrong here? You entered two Ds in one. Uh, six, tracking error messages in Google Analytics. I'm going to the back to the Google Analytics thing. We had a... Well, we had a client here, I, I wasn't able to get the permit to show some of this stuff, so I'm just going to tell you it was a client. And basically we were doing, um, we were doing a new landing page for one of their products, and we released a new one, and we didn't become the A-B test, but we were hoping like conversion rates were going to go up instead of going down. And we were looking at it, and, and then as we were looking at it, we had some sort of anecdotal evidence that there was a lot more error messages being delivered. More, more times when we went to the page ourselves, we saw that well, there's something wrong here. You, you know, you had some, you had some problems. So we asked him, uh, are there more errors? They said, no, there are no, there are not more errors. Uh, but it looks like there are more errors. No, there are not. Uh, okay, we think you should track these error messages in Google Analytics. Uh, we don't have to. It's all in the log, it's on the, file, it's on the service, in the log file. We don't need to. We really insist. I think it even went up all the way to the CEO of the company. Like, we insist on you putting error messages tracking in Google Analytics. So, and we got it in. So when the error message was delivered, that made an impression in Google Analytics. And then what happened was that the, the validation of the personal number was, instead of saying, this is not the way to do it, it said, site is down, come back later. So, so basically, and that, these are the effects. This is what happened. This, uh, as you can see, there, are, there were, coming to this effect here, was 8,000 people. Out of those, look at, look at the numbers here. 2,000 got this error message, which was actually not an error. So, and here's, here's another. So these two, look, that makes 4,000. It's almost half of the visitors who got those two error messages, which didn't have to be there. And when we found it, it took us a couple of days to fix it, and then conversion rates started going up. So tracking your error messages in Google Analytics, I think, is one of those long tail of conversion things that you can, you can do. So it's, it's, it is somewhere on the, on the log. On, on the files, but it's, it can be hard to track, to find it. This really helped this client. Uh, never tell users that they are done. So, you gotta be, Ooh, I didn't get the new shark, buddy. <laughs> I had Benny working all night, putting a, like a conversionista C on the shark, I'll post it later. <laughs> so never tell users they are done. You gotta be like conversion sharks. You gotta be always swimming. If you stop, you sink to the bottom and you die. So. Basically, uh, here, here's a question you need to be asking. At every point in your conversation with a customer, prospect, someone, what do you want it to do next? I think a lot of people, they just let go. Oh, oh you signed up for the newsletter? Thank you very much. You, you're coming to our conference? Great. You know, th and then they, they let go. What do you want it to do next? And hey, here's a little thing that we did. I'm not saying that this is like super genius or whatever. We said, like, here's the email that goes out. Dear, blah, 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 blah. You're just, you're just about to go to the biggest damn press conference on this. Like, tweet how smart and fast you are, because this was like early on in the process. So, and then all the stuff people are looking for, it's down here, it's clearly identifiable. But before that, we're telling them to tell the world how fast they are. You, you, you all saw this. And, we got, and we, got, we got a lot of tweets going on this one. Not a lot of people do that. They just, here's a confirmation. Thank you very much. So, here's some of the tweets around it. So, 
I'm also thinking that are you saying thank you when you can be saying congratulations? There's this famous book uh, called The Thank You Economy. If I say thank you to me, to you, it means you did me a, a service. You did something for me. If I say congratulations, it means you did something for yourself. You, it, this was good for you, not for me. So I'm thinking a lot of time, can you, can you be saying congratulations when you're saying thank you? It's just an idea. Maybe some psychologists have the answer to this. Eight, tell the users that they are not. Uh, here's A9. That's my, that's my, I was trying to get a picture of my kids. <laughs> He's four years old. This little box he has there, that's the typical stuff you get to your home when you order something on the internet. Looks really exciting, doesn't it? Yeah? Uh, it's probably from this mm, company or maybe from the other one. I don't, I don't really know. So, this is, uh, you, we're talking about the unboxing moment, you know? Uh, ship stuff arrives at your home and you're really excited about it, about it and then it's one of those brown cardboard boxes. So, some people that do this better. I think there's somebody from InClub here today, I saw it. Yeah, yeah. yeah okay. So, so InClub, they, they do, so it says, thank you. Maybe you should be saying congratulations, I don't know. <laughs> but look at all these things, and, and it's like, it's, it's not rocket science to make. I mean, what is the cost of having some nice, some nice graphics on that bag versus having a white bag? There's, I mean, I don't know what the cost of ink is really, but I don't think it's very high. So, and of course this fruit company, they do this the best, you know. Uh, it's like when you open that box, oh man, that is so nice. So, uh, so basically I'm thinking what will happen to this, I, I'm not gonna say, I did so many square words in the morning, so I'm not gonna say this one. But you've probably heard about this, it's called, in the US it's called rap rage. So, um, so the, what, Basically what this thing does, if you, know, if you know about retailing, what this thing does, it protects the goods because it's like you can't get into it. So it can't be wet and, and all this bad stuff that can happen to it. It prevents people from stealing all the parts in it, right? And it's, it's, it's easy transportable and it's see-through. So when you hang it, you can see the product clearly. Now all that stuff is very good when you sell things in a store. But this stuff is shipped to my home. So just, just think about it. in the future, what will happen to packaging? Because you don't need the tampering thing. It can probably protect you from water in another way. And you don't need to see the product because you're going to unpack it in your home. So probably all the stuff that is happening here will seriously impact how products are packaged. But I don't know the answer. Nobody knows the answer to that. But that's a, that's a really interesting question. So, uh, because we were late, I rushed a little bit. So uh, basically, here, here's the summary. You can read a little bit when I talk. But the, are, are all these important? Yeah, maybe, I don't know, but the, the point here is that we're all doing small things every day which we're not thinking about. But by instead, like, creating a setting, putting ourselves in the customer's shoes, trying to, when I do things, I try to stand behind myself and watch what I'm actually doing, thinking, like, what, what is going on here? And, like, looking out for all these small details and, and just and enhancing them and improving them every day. I think that can get you a long way to improving in, in, um, both your business and your and the customer experience. Uh, it's a, it's, this list is not important. There are other and more important lists. What's important is the mindset. The mindset of the conversion shark who's always swimming. You never give up. So I always have this one. People forget what you say, but they remember how you made them feel. So I'm hoping you make you feel excited about this. 